and I wanted to do this for a very long time. And uh, we wanted to do it because we're great friends and we're mentors and we've been working together for years. And when we get together, we have these great conversations about life. At least we think they're great about <laughs> life. <laughs> and we have a great time. And um, we wanted to share that with you because we know there's lots of people out there that are really interested in opening your consciousness and uh, learning how to release uh, emotions and feelings and all, all, the different th all the different tools that she and I have accrued during the years. And we've, between us, we have about 75 years of experience. And uh, we've seen about 50,000 people between us. At least. And what does that mean and, and what is it we do? Well, let me talk a little bit about Simone first because... Uh-oh. Yeah, don't don't be scared. Okay. Yes, uh, she is someone who is an intuitive, a mystic, an author, a poet. Okay, that's enough. Why? Because it's getting grandiose. I don't like that. No. Now I'll talk about Dorothy. Dorothy is the person you want to see when you want to talk about your life because she has so much wisdom running through her. Plus, she has incredible intuitive abilities. Plus, she's the master hypnotherapist of the world. Is that grandiose enough for you? That is too grandiose, <laughs> but I like it. I know you do. It fits, I know it does. It doesn't fit, but... You know, it's always hard to goes, talk about well, yourself or about one of your best is. friends. It's mm -hmm. really, really hard. But what you can know about us is that we've been in pri private practice uh, for 35 years or more, and Dorothy is the director of the Palatal School of Hypnotherapy, which is one of the great schools of hypnotherapy in the world. Really. And you do the Kuan Yin Center. Yep, I do the Kuan Yin Center for Inner Peace. I know you do. And I teach meditation. and Amongst other things. Yeah, and, and different metaphysical tools like tarot and astrology and numerology yes. and all that good stuff. And Dorothy? Does all kinds of things. Boy, does she ever. <laughs> but mostly hypnosis. Yeah, and so, you know, she'll in some of the segments coming up, Yes, we will be talking about many things, uh, not only hypnosis, but we will, and, and or tarot, but we will be talking about past lives, uh, whether that's past life regression or just the uh, possibility of past lives. And uh, we'll talk about releasing some health issues. And uh, many people have challenges with pain and, right. and illnesses, right. and we'll be talking about those things. And, and just emotional clutter that goes on with all of us, holding on to things that we don't need to hold on to any longer, and the power of a thought, and how to learn to delete the, the negative, negative thoughts, because Dorothy and I are both very invested in mm. helping you experience your own limitlessness and the vastness of who you are. Both she and I have our own methods and tools that we've been honing <laughs> as two enlightened ancient Beings. Broads. Yeah. We, we wanted to talk a minute for, about the word broad, too, because we were, yeah, about the word broad. We liked it, but we know it's kind of charged for a lot of people because it's, it's an older word. It right? is. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know if Gloria Steinem would love it. I love her, but we don't know if she'd Well, love anyone it. who remembers Sinatra. Yeah, and, and, right. And anybody <laughs> who has a sense of humor yes. uh, can get with us because we're old and <laughs> we're ancient. And we, I we, like being uh, ancient. I do too. I like the word. I do too. Why do you like it? I don't know because it has, it has a uh, uh, an energy. Yeah. That you know, I always often say to people, you have an ancient wisdom. Yeah. And it just means that it's, hmm, it's been there forever. Yeah. I love that. And it's streaming through. Yes. And one thing that we're really interested in in working with you all and and, and opening you to is your own energy fields and learning how to work with them in your chakras and your cells and all of this information that's, you know, trying to talk to you. It's trying to contact you all the time. I love that. I wish yeah. I'd said that. Oh, well, you can say it. Go ahead. I <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Duplicate. I don't I, care. I don't want to duplicate. But, you know, this is, we're both energy specialists. And, um, I, and it's a funny term, but we are. And I love reading the aura. Mm -hmm. and the cells and looking at information and I want to teach you how to do it I want we want everybody to be self-taught basically I love that yeah you know in uh, at my school I do teach a four-week course on 
um, intuitive studies and development yeah. for hypnotherapists. Because I think that every therapist, no matter whether they're a hypnotherapist or anyone else, uh, needs to depend on their intuition. Yeah. Because there are so many things we get about other people that, that it isn't a learned thing. It's just, mm, it's an obvious thing. And, and also, what, what that brings up for me is that a lot of you that are watching are very empathic and pick up mm. on energies all the time and don't know what to do with them. You pick up energies from people at work and your friends and your family and the world at large, and it's God true. knows there's enough going on into the world now that Please. we need to learn how to release it yes. and how not to be at the effect of that. Mm -hmm. So Dorothy and I are going to spend time teaching you how to not be at the effect of the world at large. And we're going to be taking on journeys into, you know, inside of you and outside of you. And, and uh, how to build an altar. Absolutely, and, yes. And, and yeah. really getting in touch with your, your, I don't want to say necessarily spiritual self, but yes, mm -hmm. spiritual self, that core of us, mm -hmm. you know. And my thinking is the more often we are subject to our wisdom, rather than our judgments, whether that's about others or ourselves, the more often we, are, we get to that wisdom and observation of self, mm -hmm. the more easily we can accept ourselves in the most profound way. Mm -hmm. I agree with you totally. Do you? Yes, I do. Thank you. And um, I don't know, we just, I feel so excited about this because our, for Dorothy and I were talking about what makes you feel alive and actually actually our next uh, session with you all is going to be about what makes you feel alive and how to awaken to what makes you feel alive so you have a deeper, uh, more ecstatic love experience that. of life. Um, but it's really important to talk about <coughs> and, to, and to notice how alive everything is. And because we're, we're talking to you and we don't know how you're feeling or what your experiences have been, uh, we're going to talk to you from the part of ourselves that knows that you're interested and open to what we're talking about. And so we give a lot of leeway. Absolutely. And, to what we're gonna be and we invite about. you to uh, write some uh, subjects you'd like us to um, delve into yeah. and, um, and, and comments. And between us, you've got metaphysics, you've got mysticism. You've got all kinds of hypnotherapy, all kinds of energy work. Um, what do we mean by mysticism? Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you access your guides and your teachers? Yes. Um, how do you experience spirit animals? Um, all these sort of mystical things that society doesn't really, it depends on what society you're a part of, but let's just say the vastness mm -hmm. of where we Absolutely. are. Doesn't really make it that okay. Mostly people are very interested in these things, but we're here to give you permission to help you Absolutely. Uh, allow yourself to experience the, these non-ordinary worlds, Absolutely. as well as everyday pragmatic stuff. Well, I often say to clients, you know, there's so much more to us than this. That's right. So much more, and hopefully this uh, uh, broadcast will help us help you touch on some of the things that you didn't even know existed or maybe knew existed but had nowhere to go to talk about it. And here's the thing I, that's so perfect because what we're offering you is a safe place and um, a sacred place, let's yes. say, for you to experience, and we're going to be laughing too, I sound, this sounds so heavy the way I'm talking about it, but one of our joys is laughing together and helping other people laugh about life. But we want you to know that you can, you can tune in to this, to two ancient semi-enlightened broads, <laughs> and um, you can experience whatever you want to experience without any judgment or criticism or worry or anything. Yes. We're just here to love you. And, and, and the, absolutely. And and why are we semi enlightened? Well, there's always stuff to learn. I know. There's so much to learn. I know. I always say I'm semi enlightened because I'm still alive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Boy, that says it. I know. So in the next, uh, uh, speaking of which, let's get. You know, 
Why don't you choose a tarot card? Let's give them a little taste of what life is like with Dot. You're and going Simone. to you're going to read a card for yeah, me. Yeah, just one card. Let's let's have you decide. Oh, oh you know, look! I just happened to have oh, a deck. Uh, how magical. <laughs> you know, in, in the coming segment, somewhere down the line, I'm going to teach you how to get a tarot reading, how, the kind of questions to ask, and uh, how to sit with what the information is that you're given. But today, I'm just going to have Dorothy choose a card so you can just get a little, little, you know, it's like a little hors d'oeuvre. A little hors d'oeuvre. Did you choose one? Please, God, let me pull a good one. Yeah, please, God, let her, please. What is that? They're all good. What did you get? Virtue. Oh. What does so that mean? So Dorothy got sun in, let go, Dorothy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, sun in Aries or three of wands. <coughs> and when we explore Tarot more, you'll learn that there are four suits in a Tarot deck. Uh, this is a very ancient deck from the 18th century. It's called the, the Thoth deck. But this one says, I'm in alignment with who I am. I feel good about how I live my life. It's the card of virtue. I feel virtuous. It's a funny word, but actually, I feel um, peaceful. And it's the three, and the three is very creative, and it's very charming, and it's very, it shows how much communication means to you. I mean, you really, well, you like to connect. And this is a very connected card. It's a beautiful card. I love it. Yeah. It's a wand, and wand rules the spiritual world. There, there are four suits, as I mentioned, and this is, these are wands. And anyway, we don't need to go any further. But Dorothy is virtuous. She is, I would say, what's another word for virtuous in you? Virtuous in Dorothy, what would that be? Um, I would say she's in alignment. Mm. She knows who she is, but she's also in alignment with her guides and teachers and what needs to happen to shift the consciousness. And that's what she teaches. I have no idea how to read Tarot. Well, However, fine. why don't you pull one for yourself and... You can read you, too. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I'll pass. <laughs> but uh, you can pull one for me if you want. Oh, I can? Yeah. Is, is that legitimate? I don't know. Is that virtuous? Are we legitimate? That's another question. Well, there you go. Okay, here I'm pulling one for you. It's called happiness. <gasps> I love it. Doesn't that say happiness? This is what I want for everybody right now. I don't care what's going on politically in the world. I don't want to care about all the negative suffering. I, I, I send <laughs> compassion but let's not suffer as much as we are, folks. Please. And this card says, because even in the most devastating circumstances, you can find the part of yourself that's always happy. And that's where we're going. Would you do me a favor? What? Well, for the person who's watching. Choose a card for them? Yes. It looks like you are. No, you do it. <laughs> you do it. Okay, okay out there. Ready? Here we go. I'm, I'm keying into you. Ooh. Oh, stop. Ooh. <laughs> you got the card of dominion. Okay, this is great. This is number two of wands. We just spoke of wands being the spiritual uh, aspect of the tarot. And this is Mars in Aries. For all you Aries out there, Aries, we say it's the Schwarzenegger of the zodiac in astrology because you're go, go, go. See all the red energy? This card for you says that you are connected to something so beautiful and so full of love and it's inside of you, and we're going to take you there. That's it. Wow. I'm, I'm excited. I am, I'm too. ready to go. Remember to write your questions or thoughts you have uh, down below, if, if you want to, if you feel um, inspired. And um, next segment, uh, we're going to be talking about what makes you feel alive. Tell me one thing that makes you feel alive. What comes right to mind? Jazz. Jazz. <gasps> Somebody in, in, in particular? Miles Davis. Oh, yes. Copycat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and you are a lot like Miles. I am? No. <laughs> not even not even close. Well, you're both geniuses. I'll give you that. Oh, please. Oh, yes. And what makes me feel alive, let's see. I love turquoise more than anything. I, I wear turquoise. I'm not wearing it today because I want to get this message across. Here it is. Drum roll. In a world where you can be anything, be kind, which makes me think of my teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh. Yes. Anyway, um, turquoise is it for me, and there's a little piece of it right there, but turquoise because it opens your heart. It does. It's about creativity and, uh, and um, flowing, 
flowing with life. I not, love that. Not feeling pent up, but yes. letting that turquoise flow like like Maui. Oh. Like Tibet. Like I wish I were there Tibet. right now. Oh, you do? Maui? Well, maybe we're going to do a segment from Maui. Oh, I would love to do that. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. If you I have ideas of where you... You know, we're going to teach you one segment of walking meditation to teach for all you, all of you out there who are antsy and can't sit in one position, like myself, as a meditation teacher. It's really important to learn that everything's a meditation, but one way to do that is to walk meditation in somewhere beautiful in nature. That's coming up. I hope so. But the next one is, I, we want you to be thinking about what makes you feel alive, and next time we're going to help you open to that more deeply. We're so happy to be with you. Take good care of yourself.